In the Presbyterian Church, we govern through the election of officers that are called elders. There are three classes of elders in this congregation, 12 in each class, serving for three years at a time. Once one class rotates off, another class elected by the congregation is ordained and installed to that office. This year, there are 12 members of the congregation elected by you to serve in the class of 2024. I read the names of all of them. Some are here to be ordained and installed this morning. Others have been ordained and installed in the services earlier today or at the Vesper service on February the 6th. The 12 elected are Bennett Barrow, Burke Clark, Alan Fisk, Jennifer Galloway, Chris Givens, Arwen Guida, Allison Genewine, Ryan Little, Dion McFadden, Nathaniel Pieper, Kelly Smith, and Susan Stern. I invite those who are here this morning who have been elected and agreed to serve as elders to come forward and stand at the foot of the chancel. As they do so, I tell you in a moment, I will ask them the constitutional questions of ordination and installation for all elders who come to serve as they're given to us in the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church. These elders have attended a class led by Pastor Nicole, reviewing not only the life of the church and the history and the scriptures, but also these questions for which they're being prepared today. And so I ask them, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith? as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do, and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you? And will you? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with an energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And the congregation is also to be asked two questions. Do you, the members of the church, accept as ruling elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead you in the way of Jesus Christ, these elders? Do you? Do you agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide you, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do you? The tradition of the church, an ancient tradition, is to ordain and install through the laying on of hands, a practice that goes back to the New Testament and the disciples. If you are able, I invite the elder candidates to kneel, and I invite, since we are in a continuing chapter of the pandemic, not every elder present, but those who are family members or close to them or active elders now to come forward and lay hands on them at this moment.
Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of thy glory. In every age, you have raised up people to serve you, O Lord, and we thank you that your faithfulness is apparent for us once again. Now we ask that you would give these who are called to this office the gifts they need to partner one with another to discern your spirit, to work with intelligence and energy and imagination and love to serve the people of God. May their service be a time of nurture and strengthening for them. And may they feel, be aware of your presence close to them, that it might encourage them as they lead us in unity and love. We pray not only for these people, but for all in the congregation and community, that each may discern our own gift and use it to your glory and service, that we might be a blessing to the world. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, remembering how he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, with some assistance, I invite the elders to stand. By the authority invested in me as the pastor of this church, I do declare that you are ordained and installed ruling elders of the Pomacia Presbyterian Church, elders in the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America. In whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all for the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to return to your seats. <clears throat> 